dropping bombs in the middle of the desert, all that atomic energy fused sand together. That's what gives it this really nice glassy green, you know, texture that people really look for in it. So, and it's rare, you know, it's running out. It's definitely a, you know, there's not enough on the planet for it to be an infinite resource. So can't even do any more tests. So that's why it's so rare. All of a sudden, you're selling a whole bunch of Trinitite. Yeah. And why, why is that? Well, apparently, Twin Peaks came out with an episode last week or so where they make a... It's a really cool shot of the bomb going off in 1945 in White Sands, New Mexico. And all it is is a two-minute close-up of the bomb going off. And then it goes deeply into, like, this atomic, you know, everything's going off, exploding and all this, you know, fusion. And that's it. That's all that happens in the episode. That's the only mention of it, really. And then, I guess later in the episode, you see a bug crawl out of what the aftermath of the bomb. But there's no explicit mention of Trinitite or anything like that. And we, sales just went through the roof. Like, we hadn't sell, we sold more in, the, in one week than we had all year of this stuff. So it was, but yeah, it was bizarre. I thought for sure there would be an explicit mention, like you said, with the Trinitite ring or something, but nothing. So that was it, really. It's really nice because you get to hold that, like a bomb exploded in my hand, basically. That's why I really like Trinitite. So, and it looks pretty cool too. It's pretty nice that you have the genuine piece of American history be able to hold it in your hand. So that's why I like it a lot. And it's all like, it's called Trinitite because it was from the first atomic test. It was it called the, tri uh, was the Trinitite bomb. Trinity test site. Trinity test site, that's what it was. Yeah, and that's why it's called um, Trinitite. That's the only reason. So, yeah. I love my job. There's a lot of craftsmanship in the stuff that I do. I really like working with my hands. It's a really unique job. I don't think there's any other job where you get to do this kind of stuff every day. I work for Bob Lazar. Well, what more can I ask for? That was kind of a coffee drop moment when I realized who my boss was. Because when I interviewed with him, I, had, I thought I was just some guy. And then I go back home and I, I kind of start putting two, to go, two and two together when I, you know, research what, who am I working for and all that. And I was like, oh my God, I'm working for Bob. Because this is a guy I'd known about since I was 12 years old. So my uncle showed me a conspiracy video. You know, it's the Bob tape with, of, with the interview with him at S4 and Area 51 from the 80s or so. And I remember that because that was like the only video I'd ever seen where I actually trusted the, it was like the only conspiracy video where I actually trusted the guy and what he was saying. So flash forward 10 years later and I'm actually interviewing with him and I'm like, oh my God, I get to work for this guy. The bonus is, is that he's actually a really cool boss. I never, I never asked for that. I never would have expected that, but he's a really cool boss and he's a really cool guy. So that's what makes this job so awesome. I find him to be an endlessly fascinating person. He's always working on something different, something cool. And then he and I are always matched on curiosity about science in general. So that's the best part, is that whenever he's coming up with something new, he'll come up to be like, hey Zach, check this out, it's super cool. And I'm like, oh my God, you're right, it is. Just that kind of like curiosity about the natural world and science is what really motivates me to come into work, basically. Bob's not a scientist. Have you heard that stuff before? Oh yeah, oh yeah. You hear that all the time. Or he, you know, he's a liar. He never worked for Area 51. That's why they can believe whatever they want. You know, the Bob that I know is like one of the most honest people that I've ever met, and I love his ethics as a businessman. That's kind of something that I try to, you know, propagate as a person as well. He's got really good principles. The more you get to know him, the more you realize he's telling the truth. Yeah, so, yeah. So. That's the bizarre part is that his story is true. It's like the most unbelievable story in American history, and then it kind of clicked to me. Is like he actually worked there. It's like, it, that was the most unbelievable part to me. It's like, uh, this whole time I thought he was just some crackpot. Honestly, I thought he was gonna be just some, you know, another guy that's propagating these UFO conspiracies, like we never landed on the moon. I think like the first week I worked here, I, I heard him call somebody out on the phone because they asked him, did we land on the moon? He's like, I personally know somebody who's been on the moon. And that kind of set the tone for me. Like, he's not one of those guys. He doesn't want to associate with those guys. He doesn't want to be just some conspiracy nut. So. That really kind of started to turn the wheels of like, you know, maybe his story's true. Maybe he actually did work there. And understanding him as a person, as being like somebody that's pretty honest, that only reinforces the idea that, yeah, he actually worked there. And he doesn't care. He doesn't care if you don't believe him. He doesn't care if you think he's a total crackpot UFO guy. Um, 
And that to me is probably the biggest indication because liars will always try to go the one step forward to make sure you believe their story, and he does not. He doesn't care. He doesn't want people to believe that, actually. He'll, he just wants to be left alone and run his shop. That's it. So. He hasn't even told me the full story, and I'm, I'm not going to press him for it. It would be almost really convenient if, every, if everyone just didn't believe him. I think that's kind of the life that he wants. He just wants to be known as Bob. He just wants to live a normal life. So I guess if you know people didn't view him as the Area 51 guy, it'd be a lot easier to do that in his life. And that leads credence to you know me trusting him and trusting his story and all that is unbelievable as it may be.